الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الرسول السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brother Gabriel Romani we're taking your questions from mytaskia.com please support the program check out the descriptions in the link and the question comes from a sister if you come from a culture where the family say that you know women should be married in their twenties not in the thirties it's going to be very difficult everyone just wants the female to be married obligation and so on everything's on the family mind okay get married get married get married however the female has so much anxiety she doesn't even know if she's going to be responsible enough to look after children and family and so on and take the role as a wife and as a mother she has so many other mental health issues and she doesn't know she can complete that obligation so she has struggled just maintaining just herself she just feels she can take the role of a parent of a wife and all of that so how do we deal with this she mentions mental health issues yes indeed in some sisters and brothers some people are not ready for marriage because they're suffering from mental health issues in this case the sister is saying i don't know if i can be a wife a mother take the role that the family expects i think we need to make the distinction between family expectation and what the deen expects from us every person has a role in this ummah men are defined to be the qawam the providers now they theoretically supposed to have that role if they do it right or not that depends on what they do and how they perform women are supposed to be supporters nurturers and so on again these roles are divinely created by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's up to a person to step up to take upon this role it's not going to be easy there's going to be challenges on both sides but people have to take on these roles now it's not so simple they just jump into the shoes and just jump into the role and you're just flying everything is on cruise control i know it's not it is difficult allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us shows us throughout the quran the difficulties of taking and bearing this kind of responsibility we need to connect with the quran better than what we do right now mental health is not something that you can ignore a lot of people do a lot of people think that hey you can just solve it by just making dua of course dua qiyam quran this is shifa but a lot of people don't know how to approach that either and a lot of people don't understand that the prophet Sallallahu himself has done ruqya but he has also taken the means the medical means that were available to him at that time to cure himself from many different illnesses and so did the Sahaba, and so did the NBI of old. So we have to understand that and connect that to our current situation and context in the 21st century. When someone suffers, it's not something to be ignored. When someone has trauma, when someone has problems in their lives, it's not something, okay, come on, go and just take this role, you can do amazing, because they might fail very fast and break up a family, break up another individual, cause trauma to them. I'm not saying don't get married, but I'm saying this that our communities, our families have to take mental health much more seriously. We have to educate more about it. We have, once people talk about it, for example, my videos, why do a lot of people come to counsel with me and with our team? Because we talk about these serious matters. So what happens is naturally people watch the videos and they say, wait a second, I have this problem. Oh, they're the only ones who talk about this. I feel comfortable to now go and talk to them. When I give a khutbah sometimes, and it's a very powerful khutbah, or a speech in a masjid about a specific, clear, taboo topic. People come after, send me questions, text messages, and say, brother, I need to talk to you about this. I've been suffering, and there's no one that I can reach that I can talk about this issue. So people feel comfortable, like they can approach you when we give importance to these things as opposed to just dismissing them. Imams, scholars, teachers to talk about this to be trained about this to understand and to connect it to the seerah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi we can see these issues sometimes in the seerah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam dua yes for example the old lady who had this problem was she would fall down and she would expose her so in this case the prophet sallallahu told her to have patience and she got jannah in many cases like we look at the concept when when the prophet was affected with sir he sent ali radiallahu an to find the hair and the comb and to break the the knots he could have said i'm just going to make dua right no the prophet sallam for example he was treated when he was sick right yes ruqya shifa all these but they're coupled with taking the means and the asbab in this dunya for example we we have a tib and nabawi the medicine prophetic medicine why if the prophet said make dua to teach us 
the famous hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, that Allah did not reveal a disease except He revealed the cure. And now there's a famous book about this, the, the, the disease and cures. So we need to understand this as a community, how important it is to give clear focus on mental health and these kind of problems. Once we do that, inshallah, we can start solving these problems. So, and the community again has to be involved, guys. We need to raise awareness of mental health issues. We have to. We have to train and encourage Muslims, brothers and sisters to train and to get involved into education that gives them a career path to help the Ummah. Muslims who see through the lenses of Quran and Sunnah, not science and, and other you know, philosophies. We see it through Quran and Sunnah and based on that, we help and we cure and we treat and sometimes even medicine has to be used and so on and so forth, a combination of the two. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our Ummah. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.